other people's stories of when they're in the cockpit or, you know, and hearing what happens to other people. Yeah. And I'm always so very surprised, you know, I love telling stories, you know, and in the cockpit, especially when you're together, you know, years ago, you know, nearly a decade ago, when, when we were flying the line out there and the, at the, the regional and you're flying with these captains that have been around for a long time and, and, you know, they've survived multiple mergers and acquisitions and furloughs and all these things. And they start talking and telling these stories. I was always so amazed. And, and it seems like in the past 10 years, you know, you get in the cockpit and you're flying with people and you start to tell about, oh, that's one time and this emergency I had or this and that. And I'm always so amazed that a lot of them go, yeah, no, I've never really had a major emergency. And they talk about like something minor. I'm like, really? You've been flying all this time and you really don't have, I mean, I could name off five things that were pretty major <laughs> in my first five years alone. But I was always amazed by that. So yeah, I too love hearing you know, the, the stories from the flight line and, and, and there we were and, and things like that. Yeah. So I can um, tell you that it makes me feel uh, fortunate. I mean, obviously I have my one big story, but I'm one of those people that sits here and is like, you have all these stories about this happens and that happens. And I don't have, I have one big one, um, you know, which we talked about on the show that one time, but other than that, I, I very minor stuff. Yeah. Like, you guys have way more stuff happen. I, I, maybe I'm fortunate. I don't know, but I'm definitely one of those people myself actually. Well, you're, you know, your major event, you know, and if you have to go back to listen to that show, um, that, that's a great one. Uh, but yeah, that, being hit by a, a six to eight pound bird right in the, the windscreen. Oh, I, I, that, yeah, I knocked a, a, I got a lot of stuff out of the way in one fell swoop there. Yeah. But still, it's just, a, you know, from a, from a number standpoint, that's really, I've really only had two somewhat noteworthy events of which that one definitely takes the cake but yes for sure and and you and have, I, I hope i'm done by the way I, I will say that too you've made your quota yeah i, I sure hope so yeah for sure the odds, i guess that they say that the odds say that that's not going to happen to me again and I, my response to them well well i know it happened it, it, it can happen so yeah well you know when you're flying what did you say on the on last time we spoke uh, a couple hundred hours a year Statistics. Yeah, at this point, number. Yeah, I'm only number. flying, a, you know, a third, you know, maybe 25 percent of what of what you guys do. Yeah, maybe thirty five. Flying like 90, 95 hours of flight time a month, your your opportunity Odds. for incidences to happen and you know reactions to non normal procedures goes up exponentially. Sure. So, yeah. And Rob, what about you? Do you have a favorite show or segment? Well, I, honestly, I just got done listening to um, 39, Owen Cotto, and, I, and that guy's got, got a pretty amazing history, and um, uh, his story was, was really impressive. I really liked that show yeah. a lot, and there's been a couple, number of shows very similar to that one, and so I like to hear um, uh, a lot about you know the history and and how people got into aviation and got to where they were. I, I really like that that storyline. Um, and but I do like to hear like uh, uh, Jerry and Rogers said you know those stories about um, you know there I was and this is what happened and this is what I did. Uh, I, I think when I first started um, getting the uh, aviation bug, um, a lot of the stories I heard were um, coming from military fighter pilots. And they loved to tell those kind of stories. And I think that kind of captivated me, you know, into the, uh, the flying aspect of aviation. And um, so, you know, now that I think, I mean, I don't have anything as near as interesting as those guys have, but you know, that's what yeah. I, I love listening to those things. Cause I, I also think you learn from it, you know, you, you, you kind of compartmentalize, you know, some of these things that you hear and you say, okay, if I'm ever in this situation, this is what this guy did. And, you know, maybe that'd be a good, good thing to do for me, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I like that stuff. I've always felt that way and, and was kind of disappointed with the fact that when you get to a private company or a, you know, a publicly traded company or what have you uh, on the civilian side of things, the information for pilots about accidents and incidences are not as transparent as they are in the military service. At least that's what 
I understand. Um, those morning briefings where they talk about everything. If you're, a, if you're an F-16 pilot and you're on that squadron, every morning you'd have a morning briefing and you would talk about all the things that have happened, uh, what resulted from it, and, and you learn because those are learning tools. And the companies that I've at least flown for or I've known people to have flown for, the way it's always been described to me is those companies – have uh, some level of liability and privacy that they're trying to protect. And so that information about an incident or accident, they're not as loose in terms of giving that information up easily. Luckily, at Legacy Airlines, they do have a weekly email that goes out. Uh, not all pilots subscribe to it because it's something where you'd have to log into the company portal and put that down as an option that you want to receive those particular emails. Um, but they do have a weekly email that does come out and they give you all the very generic incidences that happen on what aircraft, where it happened. And they don't tell you why they don't tell you, you know, what the outcome was. Um, a lot of times anything major, it, it doesn't get released at all because it's under investigation. And if it's something, if it's an incident or accident that's under investigation by the FAA or NTSB, then it's, you're really not going to hear about it because those things last for years. Um, so that's the nice thing about hearing stories from your fellow aviators is you can absolutely pull from it and learn from it. And that's why I've always been so curious about it. Just, you know, oh, what happened? Um, and, you know, we've only scratched the surface here. Uh, with the show on, on telling stories that I've heard. And I'm, and I'm sure you guys have all heard some great stories as well throughout the years. So, but in today's show, uh, I really wanted to inform all of those future aviators out there or all those aviators that are currently not flying and don't feel like picking up a, you know, a news uh, media or newspaper, I should say, I'm aging myself, newspaper. And, uh, and we briefly, we're going to discuss just a few of the headlines, really to just get the word out to entertain you. And maybe we're going to tell a few good stories along the way. So let's start off with a few headlines. 